Greetings, beloved. In the name of the Lord, Jesus, Yeshua, Yahweh, God, the One. Ah, uh, yes, the age old controversy between God and Jesus and the understanding between the two. For example, a lot of people don't believe. <laughs> you're just trying to get me to, you're just trying to make sure that, well, the weather's been very pleasant. But a lot of people don't really realize that uh, Jesus is God. They don't understand what that, what that concept is all about. And the thing is that he proclaims it. And this is the source of all the controversy within the, uh, well, within the world. I mean, you know, the cross is a stumbling block. Jesus is a stumbling block. Uh, the Jesus, you know, Yahweh Yeshua connection, Jehovah Jesus connection as one of John 17 seems to be a source of uh, trouble, like a source of uh, discontent among people that are seeking God. Let's just put it that way. Certain cults believe that Jesus is not God. They believe he was a man, and it, indeed he was a man. He's no longer a man. Uh, he had the authority to do what he did because of the Father. And at the same time, he's known as the Word. At the same time, he's known as the Creator because the Word is what creates. And uh, it's, it's a mystery because what is the Word made of? But sound. So the Word as sound creates the uh, stars and suns and planets and the infinite, the infinite uh, infinity. So that's a mystery. Jesus' pre-existence is also a stumbling block. How could he pre-exist? Um, anyway, so the confusion between God and man in the one vessel... Uh, is something that only the Father can really show you because intellect will tend to, to, to tell you that Jesus is a man. He was a great man. He, was, uh, uh, he is the, um, the go-between, I suppose. Uh, he's uh, uh, the way to salvation, the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father except through him of John 14, 6. So he he is certainly then in that case, okay, just in that capacity. Jesus is a way, not a man, but a way of life or a way to life or a way, of, uh, a way out of a cursed situation, which is fallen humanity. And um, we can argue about that too about what constitutes fallen humanity. I mean, uh, to the Satanists uh, who are deluded and um, psychotic, they, they can look at, uh, um, they look at things backwards. So to them, the humanity is just fine. People just need to uh, uh, do it their way, and then uh, they'll be happy. Of course, th their way leads to their own destruction, which they don't see, and when people point it out, they get mad, and then they crucify Jesus again. And it goes, on, it goes around and around and around, so much so, so much so, that the humans on this planet are trying, you know, the, 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 the leading edge of science is putting all its stock in life extension technology and in... Um, um, you know, 
nano machine technology. I'll just put it that way because it's it's probably gone beyond that in in spiritual technology and how to wed a vessel that doesn't give out or an eternal vest, something that can be made and remade and morphed and reformed and exist eternally that could also have a soul and a mind. The problem is, is that the people working on the technology don't have souls. Where the technology comes from uh, don't have souls. A soul is lost in the process of playing God. So much so that uh, in the guilds of high science, which used to be the alchemists and you know the traditions going back thousands of years, um, there are initiatory rites that basically cancel any connection to God. <laughs> um, you know, if you want to play with the big toys, with the, with the, with the uh, the stuff that's um, light years advanced of anything that we know of here and is kept secret. Uh, you know, for the purpose of life creation, where man becomes the progenitor in his advancement of um, the new world order, the thousand points of light, the, uh, and let's not get caught in that jargon. Let's just say um, the order of man as a divine being uh, in apotheosis, but also existing in a form that has the power to exist eternally on his own terms and throughout the galaxies and throughout the firmament, throughout the infinity. Inherent in that, man has been in contact with uh, uh, beings that are other dimensional, and so much so that there's been interdimensional travel and portal travel and time travel and all those things have been going on and kept out of the public view, obviously, for this race or this, this, this race before the extinction event upon the earth, which is what they believe. Um, to go ahead and have lift to the stars and to, to beyond, but they need vessels that can handle it. For example, having a vessel that could go at a certain speed or velocity that would not then suffer from um, physical harm. Um, the ability to, tra- to, to fold space, to, tra- to transfer from point A to point B instantaneously you know, these, these start getting into the realm of angels and spirits and spiritual mind-boggling stuff, but it's, it's also science in the sense that, you know, it's, it's because we can't understand it, it becomes, uh, if you will, how should I put it? It becomes spiritual and leaves science when it becomes a matter of faith and, and, and no longer is it a matter of understanding the technology. But it's all, you could put it all in the category of technology. It's just that you need a ultra-dimensional physics to understand it, which is also available. The thing is, then, you know, then why aren't these, uh, these uh, cyborgs and hybrids and things walking around? And, and I would contend that they are walking around, some of them. But that the technology is not figured out yet. In other words, they still need human DNA. And so humans... That are that are you know the unwashed masses, let's say you know you and me, the 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 people that are not in the club, uh, basically are here to be harvested for their purposes, and when those purposes are no longer needed, they they believe that humans are inferior and should be uh, like like life forms that are. You know, in other words, this life here leading to entropy and, and, and death, you know, life and suffering and death. Uh, anything that's involved in that is an inferior being, including animals, plants, oceans, the planet, the, 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 uh, the, the, the lack of control over asteroids and comets and different things, um, is unacceptable. And there is technology there to be able to um, get beyond, out and, and above and beyond all of that. But then there's still this need for the human soul. So the humans are like these containers of souls, and you've heard that before. You know, in the UFO lore, the, the aliens think that we're souls and they're trading in souls. Yes, so the Bible talks about trading in souls in the book of Revelation. And uh, it regards the fall of Babylon, that these people would also trade in souls. Uh, but I believe that means trading in souls. In that context, it means trading in, in human slaves, 
not necessarily in, in what I'm talking about. It's the same thing, though. I mean, you know, trading in souls, uh, people will put a, uh, a price on someone's talent, let's say, or someone's ability, someone's genetic makeup, and they'll have a price. They'll be like a price of their soul, and there'll be trading going on in the background, and it's, it's a big mystery. But, you know, you'll see, like, the best and the brightest or the, or the movie stars or the actors, and then every once in a while one will be um, sacrificed to their gods, which these are the people of the obelisk, of the pyramid, of the of the, the Mayan pyramid, of the Egyptian pyramid. Wherever there's a pyramid, it's the same same gods, same same thing. The serpent god in uh, Middle America, in uh, Central America, the uh, uh, you know the, uh, the 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 pantheon of Egyptian gods, and so forth and so on, and, and all the other gods, and and the gods are what we would consider to be angels or or fallen angels or whatever, but they're very much technological. And when you see the ruins of the earth and you see pyramids underwater, because obviously when there's a pole shift, then there's a great flood and the water goes everywhere. We Here in New Mexico, we live in an area where um, it was underwater and there are fish fossils. There's This was the ocean here. Um, in the last cataclysm, and there'll be another cataclysm, and then and then the ocean will move somewhere else, and uh, that happens. You know, the, the 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 deck will be reshuffled, and it's all part of God's timing. And uh, that even this story that we're in now has a beginning, middle, and end, and it also includes a beginning cataclysm that destroyed everything, and where the oceans moved, and then there was a great flood. That's been recorded in much lore, and then there'll be an end of not only the end of the world or the end of Babylon world, if you will, the world system, which is the economic system of the world, but the, actually the end of the this configuration and dimension of the three dimensional space time continuum that we're in here on the earth um, to where there'll be no no uh, stars and, and and suns and any of that, in other words. There's a place where there is no firmament anymore, where that, in, in essence, becomes obsolete. In other words, it, 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 life goes on. You've heard about this in, um, in the book of Revelation when it talks about the new Jerusalem and how the Lord makes all things new, which is another name for Jesus, who is Yahweh, which is he makes all things new. He's going to make a new firmament. He'll just do what he wants. People buy into, oh, there's the firmament. It's forever and permanent. Not necessarily. This idea of a firmament, of you know these spheres uh, circling around each other and, and gravity and physics, and this is one idea. This is an idea. This is uh, a, a manifestation. Um, but not necessarily the only manifestation. Um, so, in chapter 21 of the book of Revelation, it says, And I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. Do you think that people can handle that? And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a great voice out of heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men and will dwell with them, and they shall be his people, and God himself shall be with them and be their God." And this is, of course, the, the ultimate fulfillment of the entire story. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes, and there shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying, neither shall there be any more pain, for the former things are passed away. And the former things include fit the physical universe as we know it. Uh, um, And he that uh, sat upon the throne says, Behold, I will make, I make all things new. So this is Jesus. 
And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said unto me, It is done. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end. I will give unto him that is a thirst of the fountain of the water of life freely. He that overcometh shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. <laughs> Overcoming means to overcome um, Satan. It doesn't mean, uh, I mean, it's great if you can overcome your flesh. That's, you know, you can fight it and, uh, you know, and tamp it down and crucify it, and, and that's fine. But that's not what it means. He who overcomes, okay, who is the, the God of this world, okay? What is the law of this world? It's Satan. What are all the people that are involved in the governments of the world? They're Satanists. What about all the corporations, all their logos? They're tributes to their god, Satan. You know, if you like Lucifer, make it more personal, you know, that's fine. Okay, Satan is really more of a title. But at any rate, you know, it's not a name, it's a title, but, you know, the... The adversary. In other words, he, this, is, this is the one who challenges God and has his own system. So when you come to this planet, it is Satan that if you resist, um, you know, the threat was very clear in Mick Jagger's song, Sympathy for the Devil, he'll lay your soul to waste. He'll, he'll kill you. No virgins on planet Earth. So, say, so overcome means to overcome the world. The world means Satan. That is exactly what the Word of God means. I hope that people understand that. You know, I'm, as I've gone through life, I've realized that, uh, you know, I've assumed a little too much. I've assumed that people understand this. What's very clear, what's very obvious. But they don't. It's, it's amazing. Everybody has their own idea. And then, but then it goes on to say that, you know, the famous line, he that's unjust, let him be unjust still, and he which is filthy, let him be filthy still, and he that is righteous, let him be righteous still, and he that is holy, let him be holy still. God has dispersed his creation. He's created his creation, and some are these, and some are those, and whatnot, and they're going to remain what they are. People are who they are. Um... Whether you belong to the Father or not is a predetermined thing. The churches hate this message because the truth destroys their ministries. Uh, all of them. All of all the way back to the Roman church and beyond, uh, the truth destroys all their ministries. You know, every single one of them has Jesus overturning the money. Once you mix money in, which you need to build buildings and have ministries and have missions and once you, but it doesn't matter how well good your intentions are. Once you bring money into it, it's over. It's ruined. It's done. It's finished. It's apostate. That's just the weirdest thing. <laughs> and behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end the first and the last. We're going to get in that in just a sec, but I'm going to go ahead and go to the next page here. In my Try not to rip these pages. Thank you. <laughs> Blessed are they that do his commandments and they that have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates of the city. For without our dogs and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. In other words, yes, the people of the obelisk are the people of the lie. The people of the world, uh, who believe that um, Satan will take care of them, which he won't, um, but, you know, they believe that. And for no reason, it's, there's no proof of that anywhere, by the way. Um, these are called dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. In other words, the people of the world, and using all these metaphors, I mean, they're all sorcerers, they're all whoremongers, they're all murderers. They're, they're what these are, the Bible refers to in the Old Testament, especially in the Psalms, and then later with Jesus, is uh, they are called the workers of iniquity. There's, that is their title 
I don't know how many times that's repeated throughout the Bible, but many, the workers of iniquity, in other words, those who use iniquity uh, as their way, as that, that is their way. They are workers of iniquity, and what are they working? They're working it to their advantage. They're working it as a lifestyle, as a way to live, or if you like, the Rocky Mountain way. Uh, it amazes me to see a guy in his, you know, 60s singing about uh, um, the serpent eating his tail in that manner. But oh, what are you going to do? You can lead a horse to, you know, you, it's ridiculous. There's, there's, there's no hope there. There's nothing I can do about it. It's not my problem, okay? I'm not going to speak uh, like and you know, explain everything. It's just not my problem. You know, if, if people want to embrace um, look, they know they're, that, that, that everything is reversed through the mirror. They know that. They just, I guess, you know, take comfort in having an easier time on the earth, okay? And, and so you can't really get mad at anyone for that, and we're not. It's just, you, you like to tell somebody if the plane's about to crash in the mountain, hey, there, here's a parachute, but what are you going to do? You can't do anything. Then they're angry. It's prideful. I don't, how dare you say, oh, boy, okay, uh, but it's not about me. Not about me. But the truth really, really irks the, the people who are dogs, sorcerers, whoremongers, and murderers, idolaters, and whosoever loveth maketh a lie. Murderers, um, all are murderers, who, anyone who serves the devil, because the system's based on murder. So whether you actually do it or not doesn't matter. You are a murderer because you are... Any one of us who is not separated by the Lord in a legal manner, it's a legal, it's a legal issue. Um, if you're not separated by him, because you can't do it yourself, <clears throat> then you, before that time, or in, in, without that separation, you are also a murderer. Even though you've never technically murdered anyone, you are um, as much responsible as every murder from, uh, from, from Abel on as everyone else. We are collectively responsible for all of it. And when the Lord separates you, you're legally, because, well, we'll get into that. You know, we'll get into Jesus and what the whole thing was there. But it's, 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 Jesus had, it had to be structured the way it was. Because otherwise, legally, um, technically, logically, uh, justice-wise, in every other way, man is still indicted. The indictment's still there. Even if it's not fair. No, it's not fair. I'm not saying it's fair. And I know, I know the argument. Who would want to worship a God who, who, who you know, just chastises all of humanity and all the generations, future generations, which may not have done the awful things. It's like, well, look in the mirror. <clears throat> we are conflicted. We are broken. We all have the capacity, and we all do evil. And we try to do good, but the evil, a lot of times, it's just we're blinded by our desires, our passions, and we step on other people. It's just, you know, there's no way you're going to be able to do it on your own. There's just no way. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. So that should put an end to the whole idea of Lucifer being the bright and morning star and, or, or the usurper uh, attempting to be the bright and morning star or whatever. Jesus is the bright and morning star. Um, Lucifer, Satan, whatever, it's through the mirror, supernatural uh, creation of a world that is through a mirror and through an illusion and a prison. And um, therefore, Satan would be the bright and morning star. Therefore, the sorcerers would be the way and the truth and the life. Therefore, death would be the lovely thing. Pain and suffering would be a beautiful thing. In fact, some of the social engineers are even writing now in their journals how great it is that people are suffering more now because the, the, the sense of American being on a high 
is anathema to, to the way things should be. People should be a little bit depressed. People should be in a funk. People shouldn't be happy about things. They're much easier to control that way. So they, they worship pain, not their own, but for other people. And they feel that by foisting pain on you with, with, uh, with the way it is today, which I know is extremely hard to live right now. The, the, well, not for people that are zombified, but for people that are actually awake and aware, this would be the hardest time in human history, psychologically, because you're being conquered. You know, it's, it's the same as if the, the Romans had come into your town and pretty much, you know, took over and, and anyone who gave any back talk had their throat slit. I mean, it's, you know, you're basically facing something like that. Something that's as uh, old as time itself. Um, they conquered you from within in Europe and America and the West and the whole world, really. It's not just in America. Um, this is Babylon. This is the second Babylon. And they intend to put together a global, one world, um, Babylon, you know, banking, uh, science, a scientific dictatorship in terms of di dictating what kind of food you eat and well, the chemtrail, all those kind of things, space travel, all that, you know, a, a dictatorship of technology. And eventually it will be a dictatorship of genetics. Inferior ge genes go and there'll be a... Um, uh, eugenics is, is a big program. In other words, cultivating the race to make the human race the, the best it can be by eliminating the bad and bringing up the good. And to do this, they must raise children or uh, the species and have them, <clears throat> you know, not natural born, but they must, they must create them and create artificial means of birth and or creation to make sure that they control the genetics in each being. And if one doesn't live up to a certain standard that they were created to be, that they would be eliminated immediately or killed. You've heard people talking about killing children after uh, birth. It's a thing that the abortionists really, really want to get this in, where up to three years old you can kill your child if they are proven to be inferior. Meaning, well, let's say they're retarded or they you know, have some kind of a handicap that's going to be a burden. So there's a group working right now, and fervently working, to try to get post-birth abortion legalized as the next step. And the, the, the impediment are, of course, Christians, people that have common sense, for example, people that are, are, are normal uh, would be the impediment. The people that are advocate abortion, when you see celebrities doing it, you must understand, these are very stupid people. The, the, the milieu of Hollywood, by the time a person gets to be 21, their IQ is about 80. Because of all the... Com it's not, you know, I mean, they can think fast and do their lines or whatever. But uh, what, what happens to people is they get indoctrinated in, um, you know, the global pedophile network or whatever you want to call it, Satanist, pedophile, homosexual thing, um, magic, black magic, witchcraft thing that's all kind of, you know, one. And, and, and even then, I couldn't categorize it right. But you have, you know, it's, 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 a, it's a thing. You know, it's a, most people don't even know what it is. Most people have no idea what it is. It is a supernatural matrix. So by the time one gets in, once they're done with you there, your IQ is about 80. You, you are dependent on, for example, the collective. If I took an actor, almost any actor, somebody, a celebrity, okay, someone who's made it via the collective, and then they're tweeting all their liberal tweets and, you know, all the, you know, we hate this, we hate the, not knowing that, you know, the people that they're yelling at are equally brethren, you know. Um, it's not about politics. But if we took one of these collectivists away from their collective and we just put them by themselves, took them out to the wilderness and they would have to be there for a while, uh, they would go through what I would call a, um, a heavy-duty withdrawal. I mean, it would be very, very painful because the collective perceives as a collective. In other words, my brain, if it's wired into everybody else's brain, we all perceive as one brain. Now, if you take me away from that, 
And you put me on my own with my own thoughts, which I haven't been used to thinking because I've been part of the collective. The collective will tell me what to think. As soon as you do that, I'm going to have a crisis. I'm going to probably want to kill myself. I don't think I would make it very far. You see, it would definitely be a, a crisis of consciousness, a crisis of, of, of uh, where I would feel suddenly extremely guilty because suddenly I would see what I've done and what it's all about and what I've been a part of. And that, you know, they can't afford that. So when there's celebrities that tend to want to break away, what happens to them? There's a car accident, or, you know, there's an overdose. There's, you know, there's... Remember Heath Ledger? Remember how that was never solved? That seemed to me to be a typical, you know, typical sacrifice. Um, but, I mean, you know, it, it, never, it was all covered up. Most of these kind of murders and things uh, and these, these eliminations of certain celebrities, most of this is covered up right away. And most of it, you've also noticed, those of you who are on the conspiracy blogs, and, and whatnot, you see how um, the connections of these things go all the way to the top, right? All the way to the top. But at the same time, the whole system remains hidden. This is Mystery Babylon we're talking about. It's nothing more, Hollywood is nothing more or nothing less than Mystery Babylon. It's a mystery because those who aren't in it can't see it. Yet, if you're in it, it's just so visible and so obvious. And if you're in it, then everyone who's not a part of it, you can see them very clearly. You know you're involved in a supernatural thing, but you don't do anything about it because you're, ho you're hoping that, you know, you'll be able to make a mark by being in it. And then you figure you'll, fig you'll settle out on it later. You'll get your soul straight and everything else straight later once you've gotten your fame and your fortune. And everyone thinks they can win that game. And, of course, we've seen that nobody wins the game. And uh, humanity is the loser. And, I, you know, so I have some predictions to make. But I want to just... There was a, a rhyme and reason to all this, my friends. And that is this. Uh, well, we go on. We, you know, we go on. And... Uh, it goes on to, to explain the New Jerusalem in chapter 21, then chapter 22 is the, is the finale. Um, but it's a different physics. It's a physics of light. You know, we're in a more dense uh, uh, form at this point, and, you know, they're trying to fix it. And, of course, they're very aware of there are beings of light walking around. There are beings of light that, that are just glowing light objects, which are in their control too. And they're, but, but they can't control it. I mean, they're, they're, there's uh, obviously beings that appear as beings of light. We might just call those angels, if you will, in a certain form, that um, are helping them to, to achieve their occultic dreams. And when we say occult, it means hidden. All of this is hidden. Mystery Babylon is hidden. This whole system is hidden. This intergalactic uh, situation is hidden. Because it's based on, we'll never go to the moon again, Obama said. Let's not forget some of these things. We'll never go. Why is that? Because the moon is populated. That's why. And it's interdimensionally populated. That's why. The moon would be something that would open your eyes and tell you everything you need to know about this entire mystery that we're talking about today. Their eyes would be open. They would be as gods and see good and evil. See good and evil meaning they would see the perspective. They would see uh, everything, the, the opposites, light versus dark, dark versus light. They would see the system that we're all in that remains hidden in the pyramid that's tethered to men's souls. That, that is something that man just can't grok. He can't figure it out. Anyway, I saw a new heaven and new earth for the new heaven and, and, and for the first heaven... And the first earth were passed away, and there was no more sea. So we're talking about not just the sea, but the earth was passed away. The earth, um, all the creation is gone. So there's no more thing to worry about there. It's gone. Uh, and there was no more sea either, but, you know, that's fine. But if the earth is gone, the sea would be gone too, so it's kind of a redundant point. But 
the first heaven, the stars that you see, the skies, and the atmosphere, and the planet itself, is gone. Is gone. And the, what does that leave a person? Well, where, where would John be? Would he be a, a natural man standing there in Patmos in that vision? No, he would be another form looking at it, wouldn't he? So he's gone too. His form is gone. If the earth is gone, he's gone. It just stands to reason. So now, who is perceiving what? So God wipes out things with floods. He wipes out things with cataclysms like uh, pole shifts and, and uh, asteroids and various things that can destroy. This delicate balance you see here is subject to being eliminated completely and without regret, without repentance without any sorrow, too. So what? He was here today, gone tomorrow. It's God, he'll be, he's making something else. You know, uh, in this situation, the birds live and then they die, and then the plants live and then they die, and the rocks fall down, and, you know, things move around, and things die, and then eventually the sun dies and the plants go and whatnot. Um, we're talking about eternal terms here. And I, John, saw the holy city, New Jerusalem, coming down from God out of heaven. But the first heaven had passed away, so we're obviously talking about the higher heaven from the firmament. Prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. So this is obviously, you know, he's seeing some sort of object, some sort of thing. Maybe he can't describe it, but it's bejeweled and, and um, you know, adorned in, in, every, in every way. Like, like you would think the throne of God would be. But you see, God is with men and will dwell with them and they shall be his people and God himself shall be with them and be their God. Right in these three paragraphs here, the first three verses, you have the entire mystery unraveled for you of all creation and non-creation and extinction and, and all of it. In this... They cannot enter in to um, this understanding that you and I have right now. And I know, I know it's an intuitive understanding. It's not a forget your logic, throw it out the window, please. Check your brain at the door. Your brain can't help you here. Your education can't help you here. Your logical mind cannot help you here. Let me just say that this truth that you've now entered into, this mystery, is something they cannot uh, break. They can't break the code of this. Uh, code breaking is a very good way of putting it because, because basically they've been trying to crack that code from the very beginning. The entire, I don't know how many billions they've spent on this super collider. I mean, it's gotten to be ridiculous. And they believe they've found the God particle. They're trying to crack this mystery. They can't do it. It's, a, it's just amazing to me it's always been funny, like watching the Keystone Cops, you know. It's like watching the cops try to get, a, you know. It would, how about 10,000 cops trying to catch one terrorist who's really a patsy or whatever, you know, running after, you know, having people stand down and going into their homes with guns and telling them to go wait outside because there might be a terrorist there. Unbelievable. Like, like Boston was like watching the Keystone Cops. It was hilarious. I mean, you know, I mean, it was, I'm sorry people died and all that, but I mean, it's it's a... How people could go, I told you, when you get together with the, these people and you enter into their matrix, your IQ goes down to about 80 or 50 or whatever it needs to be. If you're part of the collective, you're going to go, boy, I'm glad those cops are there getting, they got those terrorists. That's a great job. And I would be cheering if I had an IQ of 50. If I was part of the collective. Yes, we can. IQ of 50, maximum. <laughs> yes, we can. We're the collective. IQ of 50. Don't need more than that because we think as a, a, as a team. Well, in fact, I don't even need to think at all. My thoughts are given to me where it's all part of the collective. You enter into a supernatural mystery there, don't you? It's a matrix, yes. Try to describe it as a matrix, but it's really a, a world that has gates and a door and everything. And you, if you're out, you're out. And it, that's seen. If you're in, you're in. He that overcomes is going to inherit 
the New Jerusalem, which is another physics, which is a, a which stands for a whole other thing. I understand that you know we can measure it, and you know we talk about uh, you know for example, um, we start measuring this, okay, and then uh, so let's go ahead and do some of that, okay, um, and he carried me away in the spirit to now this is already when the the, the sun's gone, the earth, the moon, the, everything's gone, and John, wh- whatever he is, he can be carried away now in another dimension where the physics has changed. And he, well, let me go to the, 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 the verse 9 here. And there came unto me one of the seven angels, which had the seven vials full of the seven last plagues. Remember, God will hurt the earth. He'll hurt you know, he'll take vengeance upon man who has hurt his people. You know, he will, he will make his move. He will not, you know, it's just like a force of nature. The pendulum goes one way, it goes the other way. Come hither, the angel says, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. Now remember, the, the new Jerusalem was coming down from heaven like a bride adorned for her husband. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even uh, a jasper stone, or like crystal, so something utterly supernatural, something utter, utter, utterly unreal, un, un, not of this realm. Anyway, the earth had gone away, but now we're on some kind of a mountain somewhere, um, and the world had not come back. The world was still gone away. So now we've gone into like another set, like you're on a movie set. Now you're on the set of a mountain. It had a great wall and high and 12 gates, and the gates were 12 angels and the names written thereon, which are the names of the 12 tribes of the children of Israel. On the east three gates, on the north three gates, on the south three gates, and on the west three gates. And the wall of the city had 12 foundations, and in them the names of 12 apostles of the Lamb, and he that talked with me had a golden reed to measure the city and the gates thereof and the wall thereof. Remember Ezekiel's measurements of the temple. And the city lieth four square, and the length is as large as, as the breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. The length of the breadth of the height is of it are equal. And he measured the wall thereof, and 140 and four cubits, 144, according to the measure of a man, that is, of the angel. And the building of the wall of it was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like unto clear glass. And gold is not glass, but very polished gold can, can appear like glass with a certain light. And the foundation of the wall of the city were garnished with all manner of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third uh, Chalcedony, and the fourth, an, an emerald. That must be a big emerald. And the fifth, Sardonyx, the sixth, Sardius, the seventh, <clears throat> Chrysolite, the, th- the third, Beryl, the ninth, uh, I'm sorry, the, uh, the eighth, Beryl, the ninth, Topaz, the tenth, Chrysoprasus, the eleventh, uh, Jacinth, the twelfth, Amethyst. We have a lot of amethyst around here just lying on the ground. And the twelve gates were twelve pearls, Every, uh, at every several gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, as it were, transparent glass. He said this again. So pure gold is so pure it can appear as transparent glass, apparently. You know? But I take it another way, that when you're in another dimension, everything can be, you know, gold can appear like pure glass, but not in this dimension. Gold appears as gold. So we're somewhere else with a different physics. And the city had no need of the sun, neither the moon, to shine on it. Indeed, there is no no sun and moon. For the glory of God did light it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And there is the unlocking of the mystery for you. God is the light source, and the Lamb is the light. Remember, the worm is the spice. The spice is the worm. Remember that? So there's a deep mystery. Well, that... Obviously, it was inspired from something in the Bible here. You know, the, that was the series Dune by Frank Herbert. Well, you know, here you have uh, 
a book that I just avoided reading because it was just such a big book. I just couldn't imagine. <laughs> Here I am with another big book. I'm on page 1917. God did light it, and the Lamb is the light thereof. And we began our talk with who is Jesus and God. And we say God and Jesus are one, John 17, that's undeniable. And then we are one in that because there is nothing separate from I am. That's undeniable. And, but, in, but still remains a mystery, impossible to explain in our logical terms. But here we have the mystery unveiled. And the city had no need of the sun, neither of the moon, to shine on it. For the glory of God did light it, and the Lamb is the light. And that is God. God lights it, and the Lamb is the light. And God is light, and the Lamb is light. And so we, you know, both are, are really one. But to get a distinction there, the Lamb is the light. God lights it, and the Lamb is the light. You know, God is also not separate from his creation. He's not separate from the wood in your house. He's not separate from the from the sun, the moon, the stars. He's not separate from uh, uh, your stomach when, you're, when you've eaten a McDonald's. He's not separate from uh, uh, your mind and your, your soul. He's not separate from anything anywhere. And the Lamb is the light thereof. So in order to have light, we must have what? The Lamb. Or the light of God. When God shines the light, we have no light. Without the Lamb, there is no light. The Lamb is capital L. The Lamb is God. Okay, and the nations of them, uh, you know, we can go around and around. People keep wanting to parse it, and that, that's fine. But I don't, th you know, I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Jesus identifies himself as the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. You know, and people think, well, that's he's the first man and the last man. No, it's not in, it's not in necessarily in terms of uh, of that. But let's let's go ahead and and let. Jesus speak because you know, I suppose we started with a question um, you know it just doesn't give up the, the, the book that keeps on giving Revelation reveals the mystery that the scientists with their collider can't figure out that have spent generations really trying to figure out, you know, in, in a high-tech form and billions and trillions of dollars, however much. I come quickly and my reward is with me to give to every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. And then he goes on to say, um, you know, in other words, you're, you're still human, right? You've, you need a human con connection. So he's the first and the last with respect to humanity. He's the end all and be all. He will give to you according to your work, yes, but according to your, you know, overcome. You know, I think that's the more accurate uh, answer to overcome. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, in the midst of the, yes, in the midst of the street of it. And on either side of the river, there was the tree of life, which bare 12 manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the lamb shall be in it. And his servants shall serve him and they shall see his face and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they shall need no candle, neither the light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. And I would contend that these things are ongoing. All of this is an ongoing now. Now, 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 now. 
there is no past or there is no pa- future. But all these things were unfolding, and just as it's being unfolded here, it's, it's, it's unfolding galactically. It's unfolding infinitely. It's unfolding at the throne of God. It's, it's, the mystery is that the, um, you know, I, I think this is the best answer to the mystery so far. God lights it, and the Lamb is the light. And then further to that, further to that, it's very important to say lamb here. Um, further to that, he says, there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the lamb shall be in it. So the throne of God and the lamb is in, is in the creation not separate from the creation, but is in the DNA. In other words, it's the light that that um, we have because there's no more need of light is within us. The Lamb and the throne of God is, and this is mentioned twice as we, and uh, no more than that, as we're leading to this finale, that the throne of God is within men is the the finishing of the creation the finished work is placing the throne of god within god's people and they shall reign forever and ever i.e. book of daniel chapter 12 right so the conclusion then the whole purpose of all of these things and the curse that was upon humanity the bible clearly says humanity has been and you've been born under a curse from that old blues song, Born Under a Bad Sign, the whole world's been born under a bad sign, has been born under a curse. So please understand that and, and understand that uh, But where we are headed and what the point of creation is, is the Lamb of God, the throne of God, the light of God, the physics, the eternal physics, the different dimension, the multi, you know, infinite dimensional being that's being created here. The throne of God is within that. And now they talk about plural, you know, obviously more than one person, but a person is not no longer defined as some sort of biped. That's the, irrelevant now. The form of a person is now irrelevant. But whatever a person is, he is light because God is light and the light is within him, meaning the DNA is light. The being, whatever it is, is light. Therefore, henceforth, and concluding very scientifically as I've laid it out. So the mystery of God is the creation of God as um, the finished work of God is this creation we're talking about. That, and and, and the, the blocking of it i.e. freedom, i.e. eternity. Trust me, you're going to like it. If you're in that form, you're, you, you, well, no, there's no more curse. There's no more pain. The Bible clearly uses the word pain. There is no more pain. And when they, pain in that context, I don't have my concordance here, but we could have some fun with that. Pain in this context means, you know, the pain of the world, the pain of existence. It's gone. There is no more pain. There is no, um, you know, I've been described by people as someone who thinks deeply and is a troubled soul because I, you know, the things of the world affect me deeply. You know, I, I, I'm so, I feel so bad when people are doing evil to each other. And, you know, meaning, oh, you just like the news every day. It's filled with it. It's just, it's just awful. It's just depressing to me. But anyway, all of that is gone. Man's inhumanity to man is what I'm talking about. It's gone. And, but so is the earth. And so is the, in other words, the physics that you had before are gone. The physical objects in space are gone. The New Jerusalem is described as a city. But where people make the mistake, and this is where seminaries make the mistake, and theologians, they keep trying to put it in a 3D context, like there's an earth, but it already said there is no earth. There is no earth. Others have 
claimed it's like a spaceship floating in space and it's exactly those dimensions. Not necessarily. Those dimensions are, um, you know, you, people want to read something into them, but that, that I believe that the entire vision of this new Jerusalem as shown to John was shown in a way that John could comprehend. You know, he was identifying the jewels and he said the gold would, twice he said, the, goals, the gold is, is transparent glass. Now let me ask you a question. Have you ever seen gold as transparent glass? Trish, have you seen that? No, I've, I guess I'm the early bird. Um, gold is transparent glass? I mean, even when you refine it, it's you, you, the more the, we have ninety nine point nine percent refined gold. It's not pure glass. Even when it's in, in the smelter, it all melted down. It's not melted glass. I mean, not I'm sorry, not transparent glass. Melted, it's melted, yes, but it's it's not transparent. But uh, that's irrelevant because he's not talking about that. He's saying the streets are of gold, and then everything was of gold, but. It's transparent like glass. In other words, it has a crystalline. And, and in other dimensional, higher dimensional realms, there are things like crystal cities on the moon. Yes, they're there. You can't see them with a telescope because they're not in this dimension exactly. So John was taken, in my view, to another dimension. Yes, there are bad guys in other dimensions who go in and out of this one. That's right, who have that technology. And there's bad actors, bad humans, you know, all tied up with all these people and they're flying around in UFOs and all that's going on. And it's a big secret, a big mystery. That's why the Bible is so important because you see the unraveling of the mystery, the mystery of, the big, big, big picture mystery, the tree of life mystery, the thing God had to bar man from the thing the occultists wanted to get so badly they would kill for it and kill others if they knew it is answered in the last two chapters of the book of Revelation. It's answered in a, in a scientific, palpable, physical way. I mean, you know, you scientists out there can flesh it out. You've got to get rid of time and you've got to get rid of the con our concept of space and start, and then if you want to start with the measurements, you got 144, you got 12 by 12 by 12, you got these various symbols there. It's something, it's, I believe it's a code to be unraveled, but I don't think it's the dimensions of a 3D city. No, not at all. First of all, I can prove that by saying uh, gold is not transparent glass. But cities on the moon, their transparent glass might be described as having a golden hue of light. But we, so where's that light coming from? It lights itself. Okay, but God gives the light. In the end, all there is is the new Jerusalem. So there's like a time clock. At some point, this happens. And it's lit up by itself because the temple of God is within men. So, and many people have finally gone down this path and said, then we are the new Jerusalem and the measurements are are describing our DNA at that point and describing eternity at that point. It would be fascinating to just sit, sit there for like a month or two and, and unpack that whole thing. But I think in general we unpack it. God gives the light and the Lamb is the light, but it resides within the creation, the finale, which is the new being, the being God is creating, the new Jerusalem. I make all things new, the name of Jesus. All this passes away. The sky, you know, the atmosphere, the first heaven, passes away. The the land, the sphere of called earth, and so I would then have to maybe throw into that same category. It would be logical that, the, in other words, this all the other spheres, maybe the entire firmament is now irrelevant in this world, in this in this new Jerusalem which is within us. It's fascinating, but that's the, that's the unraveling. And that's the thing that God put the cherub at the tree with a flaming sword. A cherub is a big warrior angel, a big giant angel that can kill any, you know, hundreds of thousands and millions of people at will. So that flaming sword is in front of the uh, tree of life. Man ate from the tree of good and evil, the tree of 
the occult of not knowledge of gnosis of 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 the mystery in one perspective, but the tree of life was barred, but he could eat in fact, <clears throat> obviously the Lord God wanted um them to eat of the fruit that's why he told them it was off limits <laughs> given the nature of you know what he created he knew that if he said that 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 somehow and he even knew the serpent was there in the garden which being god he's almighty all knowing all everything so he he obviously invented he created the serpent and he put the serpent there and figured okay so man of his own free will is going to take of this fruit and then of course that creates the legal issue the need for a rescue, the need for the lamb. But it's not about the lamb rescuing us. It's about God finishing his creation. And Satan and the fallen angels and Lucifer or Lucifer and all the pantheon of, of being stuck in this realm, they're trying to block God's creation, his consummation, which is, you know, I am the lamb. Right, the the final, because the the very thing in the page that concerns people is the fact that, that well, if there's no earth and there's no sky, well, then all our science is out the window. We got to stop this. We can't have God finish His creation because in finishing it, we're gone. This was all just a part of it. So we can't have that. And the humans are too stupid to realize that they're in a process of becoming something. They don't know that they're still in the womb. So we can't let them out. We're going to have to abort them. Uh, maybe that's why they like abortion so much. Besides giving, you know, their God, Satan, as much blood as they can in a kind of a legal way to make it look like it's, have the people go, uh-huh, that's okay, it's, you know, it's an abortion. It's not really murder. And you have to have an IQ of, you know, 30 to see that. I mean, when, I, when someone says they're an abortionist and, and uh, they, uh, I, I have no, nothing to say to them and I have no, I recuse myself from any relationship there because there's, I'm not here to be their counselor. That's not, uh, they have, they're without excuse. They have enough with their own conscience to know what, what the truth is and they've rejected it. So there's nothing I can add to that conversation. So I'm not an advocate. I don't go around to have, hey, if people are led to do that, let them. I am not led. But I just say I will have no connection. I don't care about people who've had abortions and they're, then, then they woke up and they were duped into it and repented about it. I understand. I mean, people have done murders. They've done abortions. They've done, but they're all kind of on the same level, you know, in my opinion. It's the killing of innocent life. Uh, but repentant murders, sure, I got, you know, Loads and loads of people I know in that category, and no, no problem. We're straight up friends. I mean, it's there's. I don't. I'm talking about someone who believes in it. Someone that believes in it almost as a right, as a kind of a right. Meaning R I T E, a right, like some sort of sacred right. Um, you know, this was the time of old. They would sacrifice the babies to Molech, and they'd, you know, they would, um, you know, um, again, this. is you know, there's a sacrificial thing going on on earth. The civilizations before us had it, and we have it. And we have it in war and abortion. And those two things have to be perpetual and ongoing in order for us to survive, according to the people of the obelisk and their way of life, their civilization. I'm not here to argue with their civilization. I'm not here to, um, you know, most of these people cannot be reached and will not be reached, and there is no point anymore. The Lord showed me a few years ago that he was shutting the door. In other words, the people that are his are on that side, the people that are, so now it's time for the big battle because the people that are his are his, people that aren't aren't, everyone knows who they are, everyone's got their, their positions and ready to go at the big battle. Uh, no, the Christians aren't going to fight anyone. I mean, they're just going to, you know, be like they've always been, you know, led to the slaughter because Jesus is basically um, all about overcoming, you know. It's a, and so, you know, if they are killed or martyred or whatever, they o have overcome the world, haven't they? So they won. So, that, you know, that's, that's why that exists. It's not a mystery. It's very simple, you know. They're, they're, they, I think most people with a 
sound mind would consider this to be a struggle, existence upon the earth. And so you're going to die anyway. So do you want to die winning or losing? Paul said, you've got to run the race that you would win. Meaning what? Overcoming the devil, period. There is, you know, basically the whole point of, of being on earth is to serve God, which means overcoming the devil. It's very simple. Those who overcome will be given, you know, eternal life, period. Uh, being compromised with the devil and saying, Jesus, Jesus, Lord, Lord, and going to church a hundred thousand times a week um, doesn't mean it's meaningless. It's, it's a legal issue. It's got nothing to do with, you know, how you feel or your assessment of what you've done or whatever. Um, it's basically a legal matter and it has, and it's a, it's a scientific matter. Um, he's made so many that are souls that are his and so many that aren't, which exasperates them. So Satan, uh, the people of Satan think like Satan so the, as, as a hive, they all have the same thought process, which is we're going to eliminate anyone that is not us, uh, because they're unfair, they're cruel, they're awful, they're terrible people. And they're an aberration. They should never have been born, is what they would say. And uh, so we got to make sure, through getting control of the genetic uh, code upon, and the hum human genetic code, we must make sure this kind of thing never happens again and find out what genes are responsible for Jesus and people that would follow him. And it's like, well, they don't understand. I don't follow Jesus. I am Jesus. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's, uh, it, it's, in other words, or I don't even have to say the word Jesus. I am. Now, I could say, because of Jesus, I am. And who is I? I is not uh, me, a separate ego, but I is the will of God. You know, I is, this is God's creation. I is, this is about him, not me. I is, there is no me. There is only I. Therefore, I have nothing to worry about because I am. I have nothing to fret over as Jesus taught us. He said, you don't have to fret. You, you're mine. You know, I take care of my children. You know, look what the father has done with the plants and the animals and the trees. And, the, and how, how much more would he take care of you, his beloved? Who are his beloved? Who are the, okay, so who are the people of God? Who are the people that belong to God? How can you tell if you belong to God or not? That's a question I can hear floating around out there right now. How can you tell if you're one of his or not? And the answer is um, that that's an irrelevant question. You just are what you are, and you may not even, you don't need to know any more than that. You know, if you're of God, I guess you would be uh, then you would not be of Satan. You would not be of the world. You wouldn't be, you know, but, but then, you know, he's, there are prodigals too. I mean, there is, there are people who think they want to be this or that, and they think they want all this stuff. And then they realize that, you know, this whole life, this, this struggles from birth to death, is ridiculous, and they sort of wake up at that point to knowing there's God there, and then they try to get other people to wake up and go on missions and take care of the, you know, and missions do good work, taking care of the poor, taking care of, uh, the, you know, feeding the, you know, the people. I mean, like, you know, you can say what you will about Franklin Graham, but, you know, his, his, uh, his um, charitable outreach is, uh, is huge and does a lot of good, and, I, and I, I'm glad God's using them to do that. On the other issue of position and legalities, I've been dealing with that, but, you know, the thing is, is I can't get anywhere with people like that because they're not going to listen to me about anything. But sometime before they die, you know, they will have the truth and they will have a choice to make. And, uh, the, if, you know, the Lord has a lot of people like that that are just stuck in the matrix, stuck in the satanic system, stuck in Mystery Babylon, who are you know, missionaries and, and pastors and churches and, con you know, the congregations and, you know, masses of people that are in that category. There is nothing I can do for them. You know, they, in fact, this conversation, um, they wouldn't even be able to hear it because it would, it, if they did, it would so disturb them. 
that they would feel completely confused. And where right now they're being coddled in their, in their ministries. And what's happening is they're being fed lies from the pulpit. You know, half-truth. You know, Jesus is the way, the truth, and life, sure. And then the next thing, they'll be, they'll be you know, parsing this or parsing... You know, like parsing the new Jerusalem uh, when I heard John MacArthur do it. I just was left so... And, and, and even J. Vernon McGee, you know, who, a guy who I like to listen to on the radio. But these guys don't have a clue. You know, I'm sorry. They just, they, just can't, they just can't figure it out. They don't have a clue. I don't know why they don't have a clue. They want to have a clue. And, you know, they've, they've, you know I've seen MacArthur's uh, congregation... And they're pretty much, except for maybe about 10% of the people that were there, all part of the matrix, all locked in that prison, all locked in the hive mind. It was like something like um, there's 87% of them because the Lord, when the Lord took me there and he wanted, he was in me looking through my eyes and he was telling me as a witness, he was saying, okay, this is this and that's that and this is this. He was showing me all the different people and all the different things. There was a bunch of people kind of in wheelchairs there. And maybe there's about 10,000 people in a service. And the wheelchair people, they were pretty much, you know, and then the people that had uh, issues like, um, you know, just, just to, to, you know, were handicapped in some way. These people seemed to be lambs. You know, they weren't, they weren't in this prison. So it's almost like their handicaps were a gift keeping them out of it. Then the guy leading the chorus... He was the most evil of everybody, and he was, and he could see me, and he was glaring at me, and what was in me was the Holy Spirit, so we understand what that is. That was the guy leading the chorus, the chorus of uh, singers. And then I had seen the pastor, and I'd seen in the Spirit, where two angels were holding him up arm by arm on that day, because he couldn't stand on his own. They were having to hold, in other words, he couldn't stand on his own. He had to be held up by two angels. I said, well, if you have two angels holding him up, does, doesn't that mean you love him? And doesn't that mean, you know, yes, but he's lost. He's completely trapped. He's 100% a slave. He's working for Babylon. You know, he's showing me. I'm like, well, Lord, how am I going to live? If you're going to show me all this, they're going to think I'm a lunatic. Yes, but you need to know this because... You're not like them, and you don't know the difference, and you need to learn fast, because otherwise, that's right, they will, you will become uh, cannon fodder. So i got to educate you. Okay, Lord. So 87% are with the devil in this church. Yes. And, and then later I told someone this vision, and it wasn't a vision, it was an experience. He was in me looking out my eyes. He also taught me to ride a motorcycle that way. He, I, yeah, I tried to take lessons. I had a big Indian bike, and I, and I should have started on a little bike and worked my way up, but I had this big bike. I was scared to death. I couldn't ride it. I could not ride. I tried to take a, a lesson. I couldn't do it. So he told me he just wanted me to jump on the bike and tear down the road and get on the freeway, which was you know people driving you know, cars everywhere. This is Los Angeles. So I... He, he was in me, you know, it was like a, a David test, right? We got the Lord, it's okay, 500 of us against 10,000 Philistines, no problem. Jumped on the bike, tore out on the freeway. I suddenly knew what to do because I had to just forget that I didn't know what to do. And then I ran into a friend, out, you know, a guy that is a wayward, you know, kind of prodigal and trapped in the world, though. And he, uh, he saw me on the bike, he was the guy giving me the lessons. And he saw me on the bike and we pulled over, he goes, what are you doing? I said, God taught me how to ride. And then he took me all over the city and he took me up to this place up, uh, up in Mulholland where there was a, there was a, a school up there. It was, uh, I think, called the Roscomare School. When we were little kids, we went, I was living up there with it. It was in Bel Air off, uh, off Mulholland. And it was like a smaller community, not like the big mansions of Bel Air type of thing. It was the very top, way up. And there was like some apartments up there and some, some modest housing up there and, you know, some little ranch, California ranch houses and, and there was a school. And I took the bike and I stopped. I said, Lord, what are we doing here? Yes, I used to live here. I remember my earliest memories of, of taking a, 
uh, dollars I would get, a dollar for, for, and I would go buy a kite or a pop or something at the, there was like a market up there. And indeed, there was a person that I'd known before who was walking down the street, a, a, a woman, uh, and her, with her father was, was like walking her down the street. And I remember that her father was her handler, and there was a whole thing that went on where she was getting shock treatments, and you know they were given time, and her father was always there presiding over her. Oh, what is this sounding like? I know, I know, Mike, I know exactly, Illuminati mind thing, I know, I know, MK Ultra, whatever. Yes, okay, yes, I witnessed that. Yes, I was there. And yes, she blamed me for the suicide of her friend. I was in a relationship, and it kind of, you know, there's all lots, lots of layers to all this, but... So I saw her after all this time. He said, don't talk to her. Look at her. She was indeed a zombie. She had no mind. He had to lead her down the street. She never got away from him. And then at one point she accused him of having incest with her. So he still had his hands on her. And he was walking her to the door of the same house that they lived in originally and still lived in. And he was old now. And she was, you know, and this was, I don't know how many years ago. This is a long time ago. And so he was similarly with me and looking through my eyes at this situation and then telling me, do you see what has happened here? Do you see what they do? You see the conclusion of this story. Now, how many, what are the odds on going through an incident, having known a person, going through shock treatment, knowing about the weird incestuous thing with her father, who was always there kind of presiding over the shock treatments. Then she'd get out of the shock treatment. And, you know, she'd, uh, 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 a girl who was terminally depressed, who had moments of lightness, but, you know, her father was always there over her. And then to see some 30 years later, 40 years later, her father over her, the same thing, only this time now she's a zombie. In other words, she had to be walked down the street, walked into her home, uh, completely blank, you know, psychologically. And I saw that and I go, wow, has she been wiped? Is that what they did? They wiped her memory and then and so, and so, or wiped her. It's, she really is a zombie. There's really nobody there. And that's exactly right. There's no one there except that controlling person who had controlled her from cradle, probably to grave by now, but I don't know. But I, I said, Lord, it must be you because the odds of my driving here, stopping and waiting and seeing that walking down the street and being a witness are a billion, zillion, trillion to one. So therefore, you're the Lord. You got my attention. You taught me to ride this bike and then you showed me this. In other words, and what was that that I was looking at? Well, well what later I came to know, people that had been through the same kind of experiments, same kind of psychological torture. And, um, you know, they were known as, uh, you know, monarchs and various, I don't know, the various names of people that going back to Operation Paperclip, World War II and psychology. And of course, this also led to Dr. Jolyon West of UCLA, who I had also known and, and um, you, you know, through, through his, uh, one of his kids. And, um, Strange, you know, just strange what I had known. And then later came to see that, you know, he was uh, the uh, the uh, psychiatrist for Timothy McVeigh and uh, Sirhan Sirhan. And it seems that, you know, Hinckley, that, that, that these guys are the same characters keep showing up in all these incidents, all these traumas that are being inflicted upon American society by this strange occultic force that seems to operate as if by magic in controlling all the events, including Sandy Hook and Aurora and all these different things, or it has a supernatural, uh, ultra-dimensional aspect to it. Superstorm Sandy, uh, the, the, the uh, tornado in uh, Oklahoma, uh, you know, the, the directing storms at, 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 at their own people, and just this horrible morass, like I said, and I want to put all this under an umbrella of, it's really hard to live right now knowing what you know, isn't it? With all of this, and you know, I, I, 
they, they say, well, don't buy these conspiracy theories. Well, every conspiracy theory that I have ever, um, ever looked at, given enough time, has turned out to be true. In fact, it has turned out to be only part of the information. It was much worse. Like 9-11 being an inside job is only a part of the information. It's actually much worse than that. You know, it, right? What we've learned since then and, and about, you know, the, the buildings uh, being demolished by themselves. The, what's worse is that the public is under mind control from uh, electronic, electronics and, and atmospheric diff- different things and food and whatever, television, whatever it is, but th- that they could see a building fall on its own with no plane hitting it and whatnot, and no uh, apparent, um, I mean, for no reason that, that a steel building, which even a fire wouldn't make it collapse, but on its own just simply fell, and the people never asked a question, why? Or crisis actors showing up at Sandy Hook and then elsewhere, no one asks why. Or obvious people that had had these uh, military psychiatrists going off and shooting up a bunch of people and, 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 and having all these things look orchestrated. The public goes, no, they're all isolated incidents and it's just terrible. We, we really need gun control and all that. Um, their reaction is to all the anomalies going on with the Boston um, incident, which was clearly a drill that you know uh, almost went awry, almost unraveled on them in terms of people being able to see what was really going on. And I'm not going to go into specifics. I'll leave that to the experts about all these events, um, including the assassination of JFK and other traumas, have traumatized the people into being controlled and mind controlled. JFK was the biggest trauma that I'd ever faced. Seeing that on television and then seeing the, 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 how easily they just shot Lee Harvey Oswald to get rid of him. You know, all this should have given people clues as to what's really going on. But then there's a deeper occultic thing and a connection with the moon and a connection with other worlds. But it all gets encapsulated and all gets, uh, f- uh, it all gets solved and, and resolved in the last two chapters of the book of Revelation, which is basically that God's creation eliminates <laughs> the heaven and earth <laughs> and eliminates all the things they've been working so hard for, uh, just sort of wipes them out. You know, it just, boom, gone. That's it. In a sense, Satan is just simply trying to survive. <laughs> it's Of course, it's deeper than that and more multi-layered, and the hatred is so, it's just so thick and palpable, and the people that become those things, um, they're things. They're not people anymore. They become things. They're just basically what drives them is hatred. But they're always the ones saying love and world peace, but they're driven by hatred. And the celebrities and the rest of them, they're all driven by hatred. And it's, it's you know, it's, it's that, 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 that uh, demon of political correctness. That's hate, pure hatred. You know, that if you're not, um, you know, a certain thing, then, you, oh, you're just, uh, uh, that's pure hatred, that kind of attitude, uh, that kind of superior, you know, attitude. It's like, you know, you know, person, hey, human, let me talk to you, human. You're going to die and it won't matter. Nothing you did here will matter. To the top celebrity all the way down to the, to, to the, uh, to the day laborer and beyond. It won't matter. As you could say that, uh, but he lights and the lamb is light. Um, you know, almost indicates that you know, on a number of levels that the, the God and his creation are one, i.e. back to John 17. The light and God is one. The manifestation of creation and God is one. And, and, uh, or, if you like, um, the ultimate creation of God is, uh, you know, the lamb is the, the thing ultimately that God is putting into his creation but the Lamb is the throne of God, and God sits on the throne, which is the throne of the Lamb. I and the Father are one, yeah. right? Jesus is God. 
it's answered in the, it's answered elsewhere too. I'm the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end. You know, I'm the light of the world. Um, God lights the world and I am that light. Before Abraham was, I am. Uh, I and the Father are one. All these have pointed to, you know, the micro and the macro are one. The spice is the worm, the worm is the spice. All these have been considered by science to try to get to the nub of creation. It's the most microcosmic and the most macrocosmic being exactly identical. Or in Buddhist or Hindu philosophy, it's Atman equals Brahman in the Upanishads. The little self is equal to the big self, God. And the little self, I, is equal to the big self, I, as equal, one. Or taking uh, martial arts, you know, uh, the sword and I are one. You know, or the, or the, I am not separate from the creation either. I and the creation are one. I and the vast multitudes of people and the vast heavens are exactly identical. Ultimately. In this creation God is doing called the New Jerusalem, it's the, the mis, you know, you know the, I think one of the keys is to not call it really the New Jerusalem but to uh, understand that it is uh, the, or look at it this way, that, that Jerusalem is us or within you as the light, as that, you know, your DNA is light, your existence is light, your, um, the final act of creation that God makes you know, the, this book is about the creation of God, which begins in the chapter 21 of the book of Revelation of the, of the final creation of God, or after this creation of God. This was not the ultimate creation. This was the beginning of a journey to creation, but, that God, but God's intention for us is to be the new Jerusalem or to be, um, to be the throne of God. And nothing less will do. And further to that, in the spiritual and legal sense, we have that today, this moment. But we're going to realize it in physical terms. What does that look like? Some people say a beings of light. But then I say humanoid beings. Why not? Why, why, why limit it? Why limit it? Why anthropomorphize it? Whatever it's going to be, um, we are part of it, and he is creating it. And what they want to do is stave it off because, and they're looking at it like as a physical reality, like, in other words, some sort of cataclysm that, that you know, after death, you move into another dimension, right? It doesn't have planets and stars and moons. It's, it's different. They think it's about that, which I, I, I haven't died yet, so I'm, you know, I can't prove anything, but I can just tell you that I don't think it's about that. I think it's that every that they want to keep what they've built and they don't want this to just be kind of canceled and they think it has a point in time where this new Jerusalem comes in and this thing fades away and goes out. And remember that he's showing John, the angel is showing John and and uh, uh, that there's this um, the thing to come which is there's there's no night and there's no moon and no sea and no planet and uh, no memory, no time, nothing dies. And, but it is the creation of God, the new Jerusalem, which is the people of God. And now I know some of you have that conclusion, right? You, it is not, we're not throwing the building out. It's just that it, it's the, what, what John is describing is it, in, in these beautiful terms of what, what the metaphor is, is an entrance to the kingdom which is within us. Ultimately, that's fulfilled. And so the, the crowning of creation, the consummation of God and his people, he will be their God, and he will be our God, and we will be his people. But his, the throne is within us. The lamb lights us, so we 
are, have no need of light because we are light. And there's no more darkness because the completion of the creation is over. We are terminally new forever and ever reigning over all things because you, we would be the pinnacle of creation. So we'd be reigning over you know, all things. Maybe we'd be part of a, a new creation thing. I don't know. The story stops there. The story stops at the creation of God, at the, which is to create his people in his image, which is the new Jerusalem, which is the consummation, which is the end of what? Them. They must stop it. Okay, so one method is to kill everyone that belongs to God on the earth so that he can't pull this shenanigan. Well, I'm talking about after that. You know, I'm talking about after that. Um, the Bible's very clear. They're not going to kill everybody. Um, you know, they're going to try to make it, you know, look good. And, uh, but, you know, this is what they're looking at. Um, you know, there is, Trish is reminding me about what happens before with the, the, um, the ending of uh, Mystery Babylon. Well, Mystery Babylon is, um, you know, comes to a grand finale and then Jesus, you know, sets everything right and, you know, people think Jesus is going to be sitting there with a rod of iron like in his hand on a throne when it's really going to be, it's really much bigger than that. But, you know, there will be, a, God will not let it just be corrupt and lousy and awful and, you know, he's going to restore this, but then he's going to wipe it out because it's not really what's going on. It's like the ultimate denouement. It, 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 we solved the mystery of the crime. We've gotten to the end of the story. Oh, but folks, sorry, this is not what the story's about. It's about this. That's what I think. That, you know, Alpha and Omega, first and last. You are Alpha and Omega. You become the light. You are uh, made in the image of God. You are sovereign. You are eternal. You are, it is complete. It is finished. And that's it. You are the water of life. You are to reign forever and ever. Now, I know that other books talk about, well, there's still a firmament and there's still this and there's still that. And it's like, well, the word still doesn't work when there's no time. And if, and, and I've begged to differ. Uh, God can cancel this creation with a thought in the wink of an eye can, can be uh, suddenly there's, it, we don't have a paradigm of planets and water and things. Don't need it. If you want it, maybe, maybe you, in that capacity, you can, you can create it, like creating a little Disneyland ride. You can go there and torture people and have everyone begging for God. And if, you, if, you've, if that's what you want to do, go ahead. But I kind of think the way we perceive this paradigm is skewed. Okay, here's how we perceive it. It is a struggle. It is, I have to win the game. I must have security. I must strive. I must agree that two and two is five so I can make the money. I must sell my soul in order to have a ticket to admission so I can have something good for myself. Uh-oh, I'm getting old and infirm. I don't like that. Uh-oh, I died. Oh my God, there's another generation. And they're going to do the same thing. The pain of humanity. The, uh, the Groundhog Day reality. This is horrifying. Over and over, the same Truman Show. Over and over, the same thing. People hurting each other and, and stepping on each other. And, and then they die and the next generation comes in. Um, oh yes, the stars. We must go to the stars. We could be free there. No, not when you're on a clock, you can't. That's why the, all the cyborgs are coming up. There are, now, to be clear, there are cyborgs now, and they're vast, and they're, they're all over the galaxy and everywhere. And there's all kinds of these. And you know, a lot of them have to stick with the uh, old paradigm of human arms and legs, which, <laughs> sneaky suspicion. Uh-oh, they were once human. Hello, this has happened before. Because I wouldn't necessarily want just arms and legs. I wouldn't, might not think of it that way. You know, why would they do that? You know, because they were us, that's why. Because they're, oh, let me make it even more profound for you. 
because they are us, literally, what we are, you know, they are us up ahead coming back through time travel and being unable to get back in here fully and, and they can't control it. But the military industrial complex is totally in bed with them because they think they're going to get the power to unleash the, you know, the, 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 the to, to, to be, you know, masters of the universe. And that's what they want. To rule in their own terms, to not go into that death, to not have the lights turned out and then hopefully they're going to turn back on. To beat death, that's what they want to do. And they're putting every dollar that they've got and your dollars into it for the few of them so they can... And like, all I can tell you folks is this, they are building, they are building uh, just a better prison cell. And if God decides to set this creation aside and go, I'm going with this one, um, or it's time for this to end and this to begin, they're SOL. There's no way this winds up good for them because there's, you know, uh, you know, there's nowhere they can go in a spaceship. They can go a hundred million light years away, you know, and they would not escape God saying, oh, I'm setting it aside. It doesn't, you know, vastness doesn't matter. The idea of this comes to an end. Uh, the new Jerusalem is the thing that comes in. And when it comes in, this is out. Whoever's here, they're gone. Simple as that. Any question? Yeah, you know, we must try not to anthropomorphize some. I know the Bible anthropomorphizes all through it, including showing John the New Jerusalem and other symbology that you find in there, is trying to, like Adam and Eve's story, you know, which is, is you know, then there's a genealogy, which is kind of throws you off. I mean, you know, you got to be able to parse it, but you can't parse it um, without being able to be a free thinker about it. You really can't. And uh, that's just the, the, the hard thing, you know. It's like this is the kind of revelation that we get when we're sitting around just going into the spirit and praying and talking. And I, I you know, I hope to do that um, a lot more in fellowship with people in the future. You know, we're just going to get into it because it's so cool. It's beyond cool. It's the only place I like to be because right now I feel hopeful. Right now I feel hopeful. Right now I feel like, wow, gosh, this is all leading to that. I mean, that's, He's not going to miss one thing. I mean, nothing that they're doing, these little ants irritating, you know, the, the tail of the dog are nothing. They're just going to be shaken off. These, these little ants flying around with their chemtrails and doing whatever they're doing and doing their inside job, thinking no one's going to see their corruption. I mean, what kind of example are, are the people in Washington right now and elsewhere to our children? They've, they've shown that they're no different than they were in second grade. Again, my whole thing about the IQ, getting down to... Oh, they may have street smart IQ, like survival instincts, but I mean, when, you know, IQ is... Uh, he hasn't paid any attention to what they're doing. She said, they're going to get theirs. And she said, best thing... She obviously read the scriptures. Just, um... See, the whole answer is there. Go have a good life anyway. You know, do good, help people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, uh, enjoy your life. And separate the wheat from the chaff. I mean, you know, uh, the whole, a lot of people have gotten down about the, the Christian church thing. You can't let that get you down because it was already predicted in the book of Jude. It's already in the scriptures. You should have been ready for that one. I wasn't because I, you know why? Because I, I hadn't really been reading my Bible enough right then at that point. And I, when I did read and find those answers there, I was, I was relieved. Anything that I'm troubled by, I can find an answer in Scripture. Anything. Anything at all. And I can find comfort there. And I do know this. When you're down because of the weight of the world and the weight of the world's problems, the fact that, you know, the people that are trying to solve the problems are totally inept. And, you know, that's why we pray for them. We pray for God to help them make the right decision because it affects us. We don't, we don't, we're not, well, I know a lot of immature Christians who are praying not just for the end of time, but for the full-on nuclear war. And then what they want to do is escape via the rapture. Probably they'd like to watch from outer space while man annihilates himself. I mean, I, pe people like that depress me. That's why I had to leave the whole, I mean, I have prophetic gifts, but I can't cl claim that. I, I have to walk away from that milieu. I had to walk away. 
I had to walk away and be nothing, and I am nothing, and I proclaim nothing, and I say I'm not, I'm not a minister and I'm not anything. But I have gifts. So let's just put it this way. Instead of saying what they are, I have gifts, and I'm exercising them because that's what the Lord wants. You know, one is right here today because the Lord wants it. You know, and when, when I do that, I feel, you know, because I feel in concert with him. I feel like, you know, I want him to look through your eyes and take you on a journey somewhere and show you something. And you know, it's been a while since the Lord's done that with me, but that's not his fault. It's I, I could have more of him if I wanted. I just have to go outside, take a walk, and start talking and, and just be in concert with him, be in conversation with him. And he says, look, son, no worries. You know, and, and I say, well, I better go worry about this problem and go call them. No, you don't need to call them. I've already taken care of it. How about the fact that you don't have to call a bunch of people because the Lord's already intervened and taken care of it? When I'm troubled at night and I can't sleep and I'm worrying about this person doing something wrong and that person doing something wrong to me, to my person, even if it's unwitting, and I'm worrying about it, the Lord says, don't worry, I've already handled that. It's already done. And it's not in those words. And then Satan tries to bust in the conversation and say, you're worthless. And, 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 and you know, you, the mind can wander into perverse things too. And what you have to do is when that happens, you just have to make a conscious effort to say, you know what, I'm not going there this time. I need to talk to my God, my Lord. He doesn't make, he doesn't take away all the obstacles. He wants us to fight through them to him to prove we really rather talk to him than the devil. Oh, the devil will show up as, you know, uh, any desire that you possibly have, uh, the devil will show up and try to entice that and get you off the conversation with God. You know, that's the, f and that's what we call the flesh. You know, the flesh is going to want. Uh, my flesh, I can't gratify it at all because all it wants is perverse, stupid stuff. It, it wants me to be stupid. It wants me to just be a mindless drone going from, you know, one uh, sensation to another. And, and not think about all this stuff at all. You'll be much happier that way. Oh, thank you. That's a nice, seductive voice you have. How lovely. You know, I mean, um, no, thanks. It's okay. No one's watching. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I can't give in to that. I, I must fight that. And I... Because key to, to those, it's depression and anxiety and being bummed out, okay, is the same thing as giving in to lust and greed and jealousy and things like that. We must consciously make the effort not to go there, though the flesh really wants to and can really justify itself and blame the other guy. There's always that. Or worry that the other guy is going to do something to you. You know, all those things we must make a conscious effort because it's, that battlefield is more important than the political battlefield or than what they're doing with HARP or what they're doing with... Uh, the Lord told me regarding the chemtrails, and I have not obeyed, and I'll, and I'll be the first to admit I've sinned, meaning God told me something that was, that was a prophetic word, a real word, and I shared it publicly, and then I went against it. Yeah. My punishment is that the Lord would do it. And this idea of creating, you know, droughts and, and superstorms is, um, is, you know, a wet dream for them. They, they really, really like it. And when you're depressed, they really, really like that you're not feeling too good. They really like that you feel conquered. They really like that you feel helpless. They really like that you're going to give in to your lusts and your, and your carnal cravings and your, and your desires and your, because, because, you know, the, the weight of the world is just too much. You need a release. You need an outlet. Your anger, your this, your that, your bad self, your cussing, your, and they like that because you're going to give in to sin now because uh, maybe they'll even get your soul because you're just going to give it up because it's just so you realize you're beat. So you're just going to go bow down now ah, because you're really in pain. Mm, I really like that. And as a hive, they all think that way. 
you know, when I say the administration, I mean all the administrations. I mean all the Congress. You know, I mean the world. I'm talking about the world. Sorry. This reality that I'm talking about has gone on from the beginning of time where there's been a group of oligarchs always enjoying the pain being inflicted upon the people because it makes them feel powerful. In the olden days, there were people that, you know, they basically were starving to death and the, the kings and queens would do nothing about it. They would just kind of feast on the pain when they could have done something and they didn't. Okay, this is also part of the human condition. And, and, and the people keep adoring the king, thinking the king will give them some crumbs, but he won't. You see, but the people want to appease the king, hoping that they'll, and you know, and we hope that the people over us, our bosses, you know, they could affect our lives by firing us. And there's a million things to worry about. The Lord says, no need to worry. You know, praise him, go there and, 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 and rely on him and trust in him and keep praying. And, uh, by that, you could avoid the bed of depression, avoid being bummed out and negative, avoid being uh, worried of all the wars and rumors of wars and environmental, um, by the environmentalists destroying the environment, which is another amazing thing, that the people behind a lot of the destruction of the atmosphere and the environment are environment that well, they're all environmentalists, every last one of them. They're environmentalists and they're destroying the environment. What do you think of that? Well, don't marvel. The war on drugs increased the amount of drugs everyone's taking, right? The war on poverty increased poverty. So there you go. Man can't help himself. I Look, I wouldn't have come here. I look around at this and I'm like, I can't relate. You know, certainly I can relate to being a sinner. I mean, you know, being weak and I hate that. And that's another reason I wouldn't want to come here. I don't want flesh. This flesh that that's just wants what it wants, I have to fight it all the time. You know, you've got to fight it. To, to be peaceful, we have to beat down our flesh so we can be at peace with one another. It's terrible. It, but again, we've got to, both of us, or all of us, go to the Lord and ask Him what's going on. And keep that as the foundation for our inner human relating because then, you see, He keeps it all straight. We're all straight as long as he's the guy that's our best friend and everybody else kind of comes secondarily, you know, like spouses. You know, they each one have to go to the Lord as the best friend, as the, as the lover, you know, as, the, as the, the, the husband, as the wife, you know, in a sense. And that way, the, the, then the couple then can be harmonious because, you see, they're not putting their burdens on each other. They're putting it on the Lord. They have a... Uh, they have an absolute uh, place in space where all of the answers and the questions and the and the and the and the, the foundation of peace and harmony all exists. So we'll both go there and drink from the well, mixing metaphors here, and uh, they'll be satisfied. So therefore, they don't have to expect unbelievable things from each other that they, that they can't give, and then be resentful that they're not getting what they think they should have gotten. Uh, from a spouse because they're already filled up from the Lord and therefore they have a harmonious marriage or relationship. And the same in business relatings and in, in, in interpersonal relatings with friends and, and people. We always have to remember we go to the Lord when there's a distress. Oftentimes when we feel distressed with another person, it's something going on. Most of the time it's going on within us. It's got nothing to do with that person. But when we lash out, and then, and then, they, then their stuff comes up, and then it becomes a mess. It's because we haven't done housekeeping. Anything that irritates me and somebody else, it's in me. It's something I got to deal with. If I know that ahead of time, I can like say back off from the person that I'm about to conflict with, go away, and go be with the Lord for a while, and realize that I got to work out my own shit. I'm sorry, Frankie. I just sorry my own. Uh, well, you know, that word really fit right there at that moment. And it's, you know, this has only been like almost three hours in. So with that, I think I'm, I'm going to let you go. I uh, try to cram everything into one, you know, because I, I, 
I really hope the Lord just lets me talk to you again and again. I, I hope the Lord will just be with me when I'm talking to you. And so he will talk to you and just use me as like a puppet, you know, that he will talk to you and tell you things. You know, you don't need all my comments about Obama, my, my, my mocking them and stuff. I mean, I, I'm watching a chemtrail get laid down here. So I, just as I was talking about this, it was a clear blue sky, nothing going on, and there you see one. So, but and, and even those people, you know, even those people, I mean, what kind of geniuses are these flying around, you know, planes wrecking the rain? And you, they, from, they can just look down and see the devastation they're causing by looking at all the brown trees, right? And then the people, you know, the fire hazard and people's houses burn down. And then they fly in and act like heroes when they're the ones who caused it. I mean, don't you, aren't you sick of this? Well, let's pray about it. Because guess what? You can't change it. It appears that the guy, on, the, the people that are talking about geoengineering, they're not making a dent. They, they keep on no matter how many activists are out there on the internet. All these conspiracies don't get solved. Everything gets covered up. So here's, here's what I'm talking about. I'm going back to Psalm 37. I'm going to pray the psalm. If you don't know what to pray, friends, just pray the scriptures. Pray the word. Find some verse somewhere that kind of is how you feel and just go ahead and read it out loud as a prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. In Jesus' name, we say that because Jesus, that name, the Logos, that's the power of the word. Jesus, because he said pray in his name. And he'll he'll make it so. Jesus is the uh, you know he's the uh, the cross is that.